back of the channel. Sorry about the obnoxious rattle here. If it, uh, I don't know how much it's going to pick up on the GoPro. It's horrible to drive with, and I'm getting rid of it today. But we're actually headed over back to Brad's. I didn't make it last week, so I'm not entirely sure what all he may have done last weekend. So maybe the engine's pulled. So presumably our plans are to pull the engine out, the cradle, trans, all that. And we're going to try to pull the oil pan, inspect the crank, and see what we're working with here to know kind of if we need to Frankenstein a motor with between two of them, or if we need to actually go to the machine shop and have one rebuilt correctly. So let's go see what we're working with and how much progress he's made. It actually looks like Brad's been putting in some work. So far I noticed that the trans mounts are undone, or the engine mounts, and the whole cradle is actually dropped. He's got a chain here hooked from strut tower to strut tower because our goal is to lift the whole car up to be able to pull the drivetrain out from underneath the front. That may not be the appropriate way to do this, but it makes the most sense. And honestly, for all wheel drive, this is kind of what I've heard you've had to do. So this is all completely new to me. I've only ever messed with rear wheel drive, 90s Nissans. Looks like he also went ahead and cracked that AC loose while we could. So that way uh, we didn't gas ourselves out. Wheel cooler lines are actually cut because up here, the bolt and everything is so rusted, there's no way to get that off. So I'm sure uh, we're just gonna go probably with some new lines here. Definitely looks like it's had a little bit of blow by here. That charge pipe looks awfully oily. Other than that, it looks like it's almost ready to come out. Currently, I don't think he's here. He may have just left for lunch or something. So we're just gonna wait this out and kind of uh, follow his lead with it because ultimately it's his car. So he just showed up and he said he kind of just left it here so we could catch up. Shout out to you, Brad. What I did notice, um, power steering is actually hidden all the way back in this corner. So we have that lower hose right there with the spring clamp. And then we have this one right back here. So since the oil cooler lines were damaged, I looked them up. They're only like, they're under 200 bucks for stainless braided ones. So that's good. We upgrade those while we're at it. Let's see if we can sort some kind of oil pan out here to catch all this fluid. Well, I actually found a Taco Bell cup in here. So hopefully we can pull it and then hook it up here. Sweet, minimal mess. Oh no, that bottom hose is just going to keep pumping, isn't it? Oh, this is about to be messy. <laughs> oh no. Power steering's been giving me a fight for my life, but we finally figured that this little uh, disconnect right here by the front subframe or dropout is actually how you disconnect your Hikus lines. Now on to the sketchy part. We're going to bring the engine hoist in from the side going to lift the car up see if we can kind of slide this out the front definitely way better than the way i was trying to tackle it that's for sure sketch. yeah super Bye. sketch <laughs> oh <that's... laughs> what? oh we forgot an exhaust mount stretch from three inches to a foot back to our regular schedule program <laughs> Get it just a little bit higher and we'll be able to maybe even drop the jacks a little bit to slide it out. That, may, that might be good. I think we're good enough to just come out straight as long as we can get that. Just move it some this way first. Yeah. Hey, we made it. I'm good. One more? Yep. I'm all seated. Now we can start the fun stuff. Actually figuring out how to fix this thing. And also how to get it off of the subframe. Yikes. Now our main goal is we're going to focus on getting this bracket off of the subframe. Potentially pull off this whole A-arm. Disconnect the tie rod. And then hopefully we can just pull this whole axle out. And keep this all in one assembly to keep it a little simple. Now 
with the whole knuckle, lower control arm. This upright assembly is now removed. Go back, just put all of our remaining hardware back. Since we definitely don't know this chassis. And I think we're going to start working on the opposing side next. Thirty-five blows later, tie rods out. Both knuckles and uprights are officially taken care of. This axle is actually giving us all the trouble as I just stick my hand in this grease. Yikes. All the rust byproduct from the tie rod beaten. Let's go ahead and pull our engine mounts. Now both of our engine mounts are loose. Really, it's just a matter of getting this thing picked up and lifting it off this cradle. Hopefully, since this is all still just a learning experience, we're finding out as we go. I never claim to know these, so honestly, if you guys ever buy one of these, you can figure it out. Because if I can, you can. It is definitely fun to learn something new as you go. You don't always get opportunities like these, especially on forced induction cars. Something else what I noticed back here is this turbo prop wheel will not spin at all. Like you have to force that thing. So odds are these are pretty rough. Not going to be making any boost, at least not comfortably. We're really on to the fun part. Got a little bit of the shop cleaned up here. Got the engine hoist now fully accessible. So we can lift this thing up and pull all this off from the bottom. There we go. Now we're good. Right? Yeah. yeah. Had the sway bar stuck in the end of the engine hoist and it wasn't coming out. From the way it looks, we can just pull it out the back, the full subframe assembly. So that's what we're going to try. Tons of cleaning we can do while all this stuff's out, so that's very exciting. Just discovered our downpipe actually has to come off to get our starter off. Because there's literally just no room here, especially even for this little bracket heat shield to come out. Surprisingly, as rusty as this stuff is, it's literally coming off super easily. Oh, there we go. Flexi test pipe, downpipe, whichever. Pretty sure this is the down pipe. Now that starter should come right out. Keyword should. Oh, there's the bracket. Hey, there we go. Victory. Now is probably a good time to just pull the bell housing bolts. And also these gusset plate bolts. Well, I was today years old when I found out that these things actually have a jet drag transmission. That's pretty cool. Not only are the gusset bolts 14 mil, but these uh, bigger bolts are actually 17. So we went to go pull this off and we actually found out the transfer case itself. And you can see how close it is to the oil pan, so there's virtually no way you're going to get that apart. Glad we figured that out. Oh, there we go. oh sweet. Never known how this stuff works. Now the trans should come off in theory. Yeah, it's coming. I just seen it. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. Clutch is a little roached, but I guess you don't know until you pull the actual disc off. If you guys know where this goes, drop it in the comments below. Let's see what this clutch is looking like. Not terrible, but definitely say she's about due for a change.
couple heat marks. Her main seal ain't crying. Never seen a front wheel drive crank. <laughs> That's so weird. Why is it blue? There we go. Yeah, just be careful, it's probably gonna flip. Yeah, that's the downfall with the Harbor Freight stands. Now we just gotta pull some turbo oil drains, the rear gusset plates, or a sandwich plate, dust shield, whichever, and we can finally inspect our crank. Never seen a catalytic converter look like that on the inside. <laughs> it looks like rolled up cardboard or something. Let's pop the oil pan off. Open the flathead in between. And release the pressure of all the RTV. Can separated. You ready? Yep. internals go looks original but it doesn't look bad it's a little dark how many miles does it go 170 oh yeah that's about expected oh yeah I gotta remember pull that dipstick before we put the pan back on or you ain't never getting that out <laughs> I've never seen an oil pickup that big as well now let's go ahead pop our cam caps off see what we're working with crank wise or at least crank condition wise First thing I noticed after we pulled this off is a couple of these rods have a ton of clay and that would explain the rod knock. Did it have rod knock or is it just making any yeah. noise? It did. Yeah, I got some of these moving uh, more than they probably should. What is behind cam cap number three? Nothing good, that's for sure. <laughs> Dang, that yeah, that's totally the spun the bearing. That's the middle of the bearing that should be where the cam cap and the rod end. This should definitely be uh, edge to edge, not the opposite way. <laughs> that's usually sign number one, you can't get the cap off. Oh, yeah, that's toast. Looks like the bearing's cracked. Huh. Cylinder four's rod journal is totally screwed. Right here you can see kind of the bearing, how it's pushed all the way over and ends right here. This one is completely smashed to the width of the journal. And it's not even flat anymore. So we've definitely had something working here against itself. Not to mention this cam cap has zero bearing in it. So explains a lot. Now that we got that figured out, the next goal is to get the crank actually out of the block. And to do that, we have to pull all these timing covers off to get access to the oil pump. That pesky cover off. So is the crank pulley. That is the thinnest, smallest crank pulley I've ever seen. Sometimes they got dates on them. Yeah. Maybe just do the belt. Now that we got all of this off, what we can do is start pulling these 12 mils for our oil pump and maybe pull this sprocket off beforehand. Have to find out maybe how that comes off. Luckily, he managed to get that crank sprocket off. But we found out the crank sprocket actually has the rear retainer plate casted into the sprocket itself instead of separate, which is kind of a design flaw if you ask me. Seems a little extra. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts here. And hopefully this oil pump should just come straight off. It's literally cast on. It's all one unit. <laughs> That's so weird just cracked the oil line loose got the bracket and 
AC compressor bracket out of the way. Now I think it's actually time to pry out here, create a gap, and try to separate this oil pump. got the oil pump off let's go ahead and remove our eight main bolts starting from the middle outwards and we'll remove this little uh, rear main seal retainer bracket crank should come straight out I also didn't notice or realize but this is actually like a four bolt main I believe that's what that means usually it means there's four bolts per main but there's actually eight here but if you're technical, there's eight or four between each of them if you got two here. Wow, this main does not look good at all. It has a complete wear mark there in the middle. They're not terrible, but yeah, you can feel this one a little bit with your fingernail. That's no bueno. We actually found out this is a non forged crank, it's actually a cast crank because of this arm right here. Shaped like a house. Push all the rods far enough down that they don't hang up on it. Uh, not really. There's cylinder four's bearings that were completely stuck to the crank. Actually, no, this is cylinder three's bearings that were stuck to the crank. Totally worn to crap. Cylinder four, on the other hand, is the one that went bye bye. R.I.P. Cast crank. Dang, I just realized that that means taking the head off. Fudge. Oh yeah, Dang. that main got absolutely cooked. Looks like someone just took sandpaper to it. You can see the, the what was it, the copper showing through. Well, safe to say everything went well today, at least for what we were wanting to do. Granted, the crank's condition is not exactly what we consider well, especially with that rod bearing be so torn up. Now we actually have to pull the heads so we can pull another rod to reuse it from another block. But we actually have to pull the piston itself now. Kind of a bummer, but it's just kind of one of the things that you find when you get into jobs like these. So no hard feelings, just uh, more work for us and more to look forward to. Hope you guys are enjoying this content because we've got quite a bit still planned ahead especially the retime the full refresh reclean of all of this this thing definitely has a long ways to go between all the rust getting removed repainted recoded refreshed and then between getting everything here ready on the chassis not to mention all the floor cleanup we got but that was our only casualty today we had one scratch on the frame rail could have been worse could have been better but Super happy with how it turned out. Now it's time to pack up our tools and go ahead and head back home. It's almost nine, so we've put in a good 10 hours on this thing today, so that's sick. I love working on new stuff, if you guys haven't been able to tell. it's uh, Sometimes it's not boring, but it gets old doing the same exact thing all the time. Sometimes you need a palate cleanser. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe down below help us get to a thousand subs before the end of the year we're almost there only need 40 more of you guys to go thank you guys for joining and watching and we'll catch you in the next one peace